Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're at London Heathrow but we're going to be trying out Virgin Atlantic upper class on the Dreamliner over to Miami. Flight time is around nine and a half, ten hours. It's going to be give you a good opportunity to experience what it's like to fly in the day. So I don't know how much sort of sleep we're going to get but we'll obviously check out what it's like, the, the bed, the flat bed, that sort of thing. Just spent a little bit of time in the uh, clubhouse which was pretty good now of course if you haven't already do make sure you smash that subscribe button for plenty more videos like this on the channel i specialize in doing business and first class reviews of airlines all over the world with that said guys i'll catch you in a moment on board Today we're on the Virgin Atlantic Dreamliner. It features their infamous banana bed upper class seats. If you've not seen these before, they're pretty unique and certainly were game changing when they came out 15 years ago. Time has since moved on, but they have introduced a new suite which I was lucky to review recently. You'll want to check this out afterwards. Waiting at my seat was a Herschel amenity kit and some noise cancelling headphones. As I settled in, a friendly flight attendant came over and offered me a glass of Canada de Chêne Champagne. This retails at around $40 a bottle and tasted great. It wasn't long before we pushed back and were airborne. This gives me a chance to take a look around the seat in more detail. To your left, you have a TV screen, which pops out at the touch of a button. It extends out in front of you and offers quite a flexible viewing position. It does get a little awkward though when you're eating or indeed need to get up out of your seat. Virgin's in-flight entertainment is called Vera and offers a relatively good selection of movies and series. The headphones jack and USB port are directly under the TV. Let's fold this back up and check out the other features. Just down from your TV is a power port and document holder. This is also where your headphones are stowed. Next, your handset controller. This is released at the touch of a button. It's a touchscreen interface, though I found this quite sluggish and unresponsive. It also changes between portrait and landscape, depending on how you hold it, which I thought was pretty cool. Now here's the downside of these banana seats. You're facing away from the window, which for someone who loves being able to look out the window in flight, I find this most frustrating. One thing you may be familiar with is that the Dreamliners have dimming windows. Now something I love is that you can actually have someone sit opposite you on the ottoman. There's even a seatbelt for them during turbulence, which is great for couples and something you'd usually only see in first. Now it's time for the food. I released my tray table with the seat controls to my right. It folds out and provides great adjustability depending on your seating position something they miss on the new Virgin Upper Suite. I was provided with a menu, and I love the informal branding which Virgin have here. I really hate it when a premium cabin has a stuffy and up itself vibe. My table was set complete with these amazing salt and pepper planes. They even have steel meat written on the bottom of them. I was then served some still water and a Diet Coke. Some warm fresh bread was provided, funnily enough in the shape of the upper class seat. My starter came shortly thereafter. I went for the prawn salad, which was excellent. Next was the beef, which I admit doesn't look that appetizing, but it was sublime. Then a chocolate tort for dessert, which was rich and delicious. Lastly, I had to go for the cheese plate. Overall, a particularly great meal. I feel this is a strong point for Virgin. Let's check out the bed. Simply press the lay flat button on your seat controls and the bed folds down for you. This takes around 30 seconds. Air staff do proactively do this for you, but for the purposes of this review, I did it myself. Virgin provides a comfortable mattress topper and a fluffy white pillow for your bed. There is also a duvet stowed just behind your seat. This is way ahead of the competition, and even Qatar only offer a blanket in business. As far as in-flight beds go, this has to be one of the comfiest. There's ample legroom, especially as your feet are not in a dreaded foot cubby. Yes, it's dated, but if you want a comfortable sleep, this really does do the trick. Here's Virgin's party piece, their bar. Located to the rear of the upper class cabin, the Dreamliner features an unmanned bar. There's even bar stools, great for socializing and for a change of scenery from your seat. There's a variety of soft drinks available and of course, alcoholic ones too. There are also snacks left out, which strangely were not replenished throughout the flight. However, you can also order food direct to the bar. I chose to have afternoon tea, complete with fresh scones, jam, and clotted cream. Let's take a look at what you get in your upper class Herschel amenity kit. 
The bag itself is of excellent quality and I actually use one as my wash bag when traveling. First up are some foam earplugs, some toothpaste, toothbrush, moisturizer, a pen, particularly useful for landing cards, an eye mask, and some flight socks. Overall, not bad at all. Lastly, the washrooms. There are four located between upper and premium economy. These are stocked with rent amenities and were kept pretty clean throughout the flight. Overall, I think it's fair to say that for such an old hard product, Virgin does a great job. Would I fly upper class again? With such few decent premium options to a lot of the US routes which Virgin fly, then yes, I would. Though I would go out of my way to get on their upper suite, which is operated on their New York routes and coming soon to their San Fran and LAX routes. So thanks very much for watching guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll catch you again next week.